Sal Xiang, you also think that there's going to be wealth transfer from the south to the north and the west. How is that going to happen? So when we say when we, we, we use the term wealth transfer, because I think people understand what that means, but it's, it's a transfer of value. It's not necessarily dollars, but if one guy over here is earning one dollar less and one guy over here starts earning one dollar more, you know, you do that for a few days and you see that the scale is tipped. Um, so and, and so what is going to happen is through all these mechanisms, ways in which uh, the regions in the south either become less productive in the things that they're trying to do, or they face higher rates of storms, like uh, imposing costs on the population. Uh, Health costs will end up rising. Demand for electricity and people's electrical bills are going to rise. Whereas in the north, the cost of electricity, people are actually going to save money because they're going to be heating their homes less in the winter. They're going to be having lower medical bills the value of their property might rise as it becomes warmer in the winter. And so what you see is the sort of quality of life and uh, the ability of the local economies to generate the revenue they need to make other types of investments. That's, gonna, that's just going to compound over time. And, so, um, and, and what is really striking, I think, is that the regions that are going to be harmed tend to be parts of the country that have benefited a lot less from economic growth over the last several decades. And so they're the southeast parts of the U.S. are struggling in, in many places, um, whereas out here on the West Coast and the Pacific Northwest, there's been booming economies through technology and other industries, and those are the regions that are going to benefit. Mm-hmm.